<laughs> okay. Okay. So we're here this morning, not so much to work or get anything done, just to do some planning. Uh, the snow and ice all melted so we can actually see. And we plan to start the tie replacement program right here. And the reason for that is when we investigated and then bought the property and came in here, this section of rail was laying on its side. I remember we hacked through the trees and we went, we looked at it like, what in the world? This piece is laying on its side. And we think it was when they took the south point and the yard out of service, they rolled that over to make it very obvious you can't go beyond this point. So when we put this back in, we just bolted these two rails together there there is a, a joint bar on the other side that needs to deal with that obviously but um here up here at this end we just use the only thing holding this end together is uh come up where you can get zoom right in on all right is this gauge rod so one joint bar at that end. Gauge rod on this end right here is where Graham had to cut like an inch. It was less than that, remember? Because we cut it on a cold day. Or no, we cut it on a hot day when it wouldn't slide in. Then came back the next morning when it was 30 degrees and it was a one inch gap. Well, we had to, um, we had to, we had to get the rail in. So yeah. We had to cut it. We, we had to get the truck down through there. I, I don't regret doing that. It was just interesting. I called a railroad buddy of mine and he said, track assemblies expand and contract together. As they get hot and cold, this whole thing pushes. And that's one of the reasons why track structures get loose because they're all the time pushing and growing and bending. And that's why bolts get loose. Well, if you take a rail out of one side then this one is moving together but these <laughs> these are now doing this well the day we came here this was was this rail wouldn't fit back in it was too long so that's some interesting aspect of railroading anyway this is where we are going to do some tie replacement because this piece of rail is held on the back side by just a, here's the spike still in now we didn't put that in that was there when they pulled the rail off this way so and here's another spike so this piece of rail we're going to pick up and move out of the way then we're going to be able to sit over here and pull a tie without having to slide it all the way out under both rails it should be much easier mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, instead of trying to, well, some of them, like we were saying with the cat, we could just, like, a bad one like that, you could just dig with the cat and break it in the middle, where, where we're not going to pull the rail out. Yeah. If you pull the rail out, you can just grab it. Well, for our yeah. first learning experience, this should be a good spot because it's so easy to do. Yeah. We may learn that taking the rail away isn't that big of an advantage. Now, this isn't a bad section as no. far as... Now this one's worth doing. <laughs> yeah. What are we doing for the ties? Are we doing every three? Are we doing every... Well, only in this section... Only the bad ones? Only the bad ones. But this section isn't that bad. No, this... Remember this Here's one. This... We'll do this one. Yeah. I mean, you can tell it. There's got ballast pushed down in it where it's, you know, hollow. Mm -hmm. And this, this is probably, yeah. so there might only be three or four, but I think it's a great place. This one looks pretty bad. So we're going to end up replacing, and is that the one we looked at? Yeah. Maybe five or six in this section. But anyway, when we come back, um, this is all a big classroom. This is where we'll learn. And it's just such an easy rail to remove because there's not very much holding it in place. Now there's one that's really, really bad. And you can replace the ties here because we can slide them out the end because there's enough of a, a, a swale here. Whereas down in Death Valley, it's perfectly flat and, and hard to get them out. But these right here... 
If we can grab them, we can pull them out the ends. There's a turkey. <laughs> this one's a good example of one that really needs to replace. This whole section is. Oh, so yeah, look at that. Look at that. And the one beside it is just as bad. Yeah. And w this is spiked down fairly well, so we wouldn't pull this out. But the other reason to replace these two is look how close it is to the joint bar. Yeah. So those right there. Hopefully the, the mini excavator with its new inexpensive but possibly effective attachment can pull these out. But these are just going to crumble. These will just fall right apart. Yeah, that'll turn into splinters. Well, we're excited about getting started again. Thanks for coming along. We're going to learn about tie replacement. All right, so these are the ties that we're going to be using. Uh, we bought them from a landscaping place. They're relay ties. What we're going to do is we're going to put them on either that railroad cart, if you can them to, or another one that we have, and then push them down there and unload them with the excavator, our little mini excavator. We have the thing that we got to... Shut up. We got a little thing that we got to um, grab onto the ties that we're going to put on the end of the excavator. And hopefully that will make them a lot easier because our exterior doesn't have a thumb. So we're back on the tracks. The very first part of this video was shot on February 22nd. Today is about exactly a month later, maybe March 24th. We're back at it. Now the ground's not frozen, although today is kind of cool. And for those of you that like the Farmer's Almanac, the forsythia has bloomed, which means it's probably going to snow three more times. But we have got to get started on our projects here. So we are going to do a uh, start on tie replacement today. I'll show you the tools we've got laid out, what we're thinking, how we're going to do it. Now, I do have big news. There's a potential buyer of a building that wants rail service. So the word is out that we've got the rail opened up. I wouldn't say it's fully functional, but we've got it opened up. And that has got people interested, and we're now starting those talks. So uh, that's big news. That means we need to keep forging ahead. So as I said in that earlier video, this piece of rail is barely spiked down. It's bolted at that end with one joint bar and the other end with the gauge rod. But we're going to try pulling out a tie with our new secret weapon, these log tongs. Now, a tie handler is a machine, not unlike an excavator, but it's got a swiveling, clamping device on the end that turns. Now, even if we had a thumb for this excavator, it still wouldn't make it a tie handler. So we need something that would swivel. Graham, pick that up and we'll give him a good look at it. We bought two of these. We're going to see if we can pull a tie out with one and also if we can uh, hang it the way it would be. We're going to see if we can grab ties with it, pull ties out with it. 
carry ties and get them to where we need them. So we're going to go on down the way to the tie yard, grab, well, first we'll count how many ties we want for here. We might want four. I think we ought to try pulling a tie out with that rail still on. See if we can slide it out, what it would take to dig out. And I do want to say today we're learning like every day on the ETR we're learning. This is the first time we've used this rail cart. We bought it for scrap. You think, why is this hole elongated? Why is the bottom, the gap on the bottom? Because this thing has been worn so much, the axle shafts worn up into the pillow block. This this thing is really old. How about a square, but, square nuts? Yeah. You yeah. Heat. Yeah. So it's very, very old. We're going to give it a try. We got some other interesting tools with us. Uh, let's get this party started. We'll see if we can get this season off to a roaring start. So we're going to see if we can pull a tie out the end with the tie tongs. We've got two pair of those. See if we can make a tie handler out of a mini excavator. We do have, we bought at an auction, a rail lifter and a tie remover. The tie remover is how this work will get done. But I do want to try this while we're here because it's what we said we were going to do. And I'm curious. And this is all about learning. Um, but the tie remover, which we'll need to rebuild, should do this job quite well. In the meantime, we'll learn, make a little progress, uh, hopefully entertain you guys. I know a lot of you know how to do this work quite well. Appreciate your comments. So we're going to go up the way to the tie yard, grab the ties, come back and get started. So yes, the grapple would be better at this, and yes, we do own a grapple, but we're using one piece of equipment today. We're seeing what we can get and get done. Is this a learning experience? Absolutely. Could we, could this be a fail? It could, but sometimes knowing what you can do is, is followed by finding out what you can't do. So we're just going to try this. We're, we're not saying this is the genius way, but we're going to try it. So I did not sharpen these but I'm going to try just setting them a little bit. Okay, Graham, go ahead and get in and try it. Okay, so we're just going to see what happens. Can you make an excavator into a tie handler? with tie tongs made in China. Are you going, wait, wait, hold on just a second. I'll see if I can push this back. The question is, can he push this old worn out cart by hand? And the answer is, oh yeah, but he's the bionic man. Oh. See, that's where when those things let loose. But. So go to the middle point now. And we do have two sets of these. We're going to run and get the other set. At that time, we didn't uh, hit it with the hammer to set the point. And I didn't sharp. Yeah, see, I didn't sharpen the points either, which I think maybe needs to be done. That actually worked fairly well. Let that down. Swing over and get another. See if you can release and get away. Yeah. Okay. Grab another. You know what? I just grabbed that one. Even standing the way it is is going to be fine. You got any more reach? If it, was, if it was on the end of the bucket and that thing would stay sideways, I could grab it by myself. Well, I don't mind helping. Uh, remind me to bring the tripod back. Ow. Hold on, I can set this down. Okay, I've got that in an old spike hole and I set the other side with the hammer. We're going to see what the young genius can do here. Place your bets. You think he can. Oh yeah. Well, we might have a hillbilly tie handler here. Okay, hold right. Yeah, I'll just roll it forward while you come over to get the next one. We think with two of these hanging off there, we can get... Uh, yeah, if you want to try it. I don't know that we got time for that, but you can try it. This is like a carnival game. Give me your tickets and you can try. I'll do that by hand. 
Okay, pick your next tie here. We said we needed six. We counted, but I don't think we had the video running where we counted the six we want to replace. Oh, I forgot to move this one over. Hold on. Graham and I both today are wearing gloves that were sent by a subscriber. He was concerned about our hands. Um, I'll get his name for you. That was really nice. Now, do we like that tie? Overall, it's good, but man, the end of it is checked a little bit. See, they're fairly pointy. There you go. It's just gonna be to figure out how to get it to let go by itself. Yeah, yeah, you'll get you'll get good at it, no doubt. Oh, looky there, there's an interesting thing to look at. That's called a tie plug, where somebody has pounded a plug in there. What that does is it tightens the hole up when you put the next spike in there. So he's waiting on me. I'm gonna put my gloves back on. We're going to go over and grab the next one. By the way, it's hard to find stuff made in the U.S. I should have tried harder, but I'm pretty sure these came from China. They were $39. Got them on eBay. Okay. Nah. It, hang on. I'm going to set it with the hammer. We would either have to sharpen those or. Add weight, you say add weight? Oh man. We're going to find out how good these ties are, I think. That went too far. Good. <laughs> see they're doing what they're designed to do the tighter you pull now that extend there yeah it'll come off the end good okay two more now we're also learning about ties some of these are better than others. Maybe in the end we'll say no more. We're not buying them like that anymore. For those of you that are brand new to this topic, we bought these as landscape ties thinking that some of them were really good. And it may be after you unbundle them and get looking closer, you're not as impressed. Hang on, I'm going to set the next set of tongs. Now that looks like one of the good ones. That's what I think we wanted was ties like that. Oh, he's going to put it on top. What an operator. Oh, yeah. Don't dump your chain out. Okay, one more. What do you think, subscribers? Which one do you want? I'm thinking this one right here. Stand by. That might be the best, that might be the best tie in the bunch. Hang on, if you want me to roll, okay, I see what you're doing. That might be the best tie in the bunch right there. I think I would buy those at $19 all day. Okay, we're about done at the tie yard. Now we're gonna go up and see Will this mini excavator pull a length of rail? Again, place your bets. Huh? That's how to do that. Oh, man. All right. Six ties, a load of tools. Hey, that's interesting. That tie end right there is the J lead. So as I stand here and look up that way, these ties are laying right on the old road bed for the J lead. Okay, so let me 
go over what we're going to do again. We've got the ties here, tools. We're going to undo this gauge rod. Then we're going to go up there and undo that joint bar and see if this machine can move this piece of rail. Unless you want to try pulling one of these out. With the edge of the cat? Let's, let's just pull the rail first because then we won't have to crawl over the rail. If it'll pull it out of the way. So you're disconnected now. Go ahead up there to the other end of that joint bar. I'll undo this. You undo that. We'll give her a pull. Something else about those is we can maybe use those as rail grabbers. In the holes down well, there at that end. I think it would do it. I don't. Just, it'll slide I off. I think it will. I won't. I, I don't. I know it I'll won't. You a White Castle slider. Yeah, a singular. I'll take that bet. You're going to regret because no, it'll go in the holes and pull it. Okay, undo that end. Okay, so we've got this thing completely undone. Now we are going to use this, which I hadn't envisioned being used this way. But okay, go up a little. That's a little bit sketchy, but go ahead and try it. Okay, just keep going and steer, lift the blade. Yeah, but it's pulling me down. Yeah, but it, you're still making forward progress. Keep the rail as close as you can over there so you can still pass by with the excavator. So there's the answer, yes, mini excavator. Yeah, so we can work, we're gonna replace this one Oh, it's underneath the other side. Might have needed seven ties. Yeah, that's not my favorite. We've got a set of rail tongs. Just, you're fine. You're gonna pull right over that. We just couldn't find them today. Anybody else like that? You always can't find what you need. But if you try sometime, you just might find. You get what you need. Wow, this worked better than I thought it would. Look at him go. You ever work with your son before? Sometimes you go, oh my gosh, I could do this so much faster. And then other times, I gotta admit with him, it is faster here. So I'm glad to have him back. He's been doing a big scrap project, as is his passion. About a foot and a half. Okay, that's good. Those tongs do what tongs do, which is uh, crawl backwards. There you go. <laughs> Good job, Junior. Uh, Graham says, we ought to label this video, taking your railroad apart. I thought, yeah, did we just do that? Here's what I want you to do. Crawl up here, get turned this way so the tracks are this way, and we'll try grabbing a tie from here and pulling it out that way. Uh, you could take the bucket over there for the first push. Well, no, I'm saying if I'm sitting on the rail like this, with your blade up against that rail, you have all the pushing power just about. But then once it's underneath you, yeah, you can't. You have so, to turn and grab anyway. yeah, I don't mind you taking the bucket on the first one. Now, people, that's the way this is normally done with a backhoe that's bigger than our machine that sits over here you take a cribbing bucket over there and roll it push underneath that rail then you get on this side of the rail and push again under this rail and then you get it out i've seen guys do that it's like me spreading butter with a knife they're pulling ties it's just that smooth so graham get over one of these that looks the worst straddling it so the so our weight's not down on it and then, and then turn that way, push it a little, then we're going to grab it with the tongs and see if we can pull it right out. Yeah. And I was going to dig around it with a, with a pick, but maybe I'll just shovel the top off and clean it a little, and we'll try it. A thought that I just had is, because of the width of the track, the tracks on this, all the weight of the machine's going to be on the ballast beside the tie, pushing more ballast up against the tie. 
No, I disagree. But I get the concept you're yeah, talking yeah, about. But it, so doing. get get on, split your way between this tie and this tie, and we'll work on this tie. You know what I mean? Well, this is a lot of tools for two people to use, but we brought them in case we need them. Spike puller, which you'll see us use here in a minute. Uh, switch broom. We've talked about switch brooms before. This item over here is really interesting. I'm actually going to use that leaf rake here in a minute just to get all the leaves off the tie I want to do. We think this is a rail puller. It's made by Nolan, which is, and it's, you could look it up, I'll bet. One of you will have fun doing this. Looks like RP1 rail puller. <laughs> and I don't know that this is the jaw for in here. I don't know where we got this. I think we got this at an auction, but was this part of it? Yes, that looks like, well, see how it would work? You'd put it over the rail and then slide. Then you would slide a wedge in there, but it looks like maybe it takes a small wedge on either side. I'll bet it takes two wedges. So if anybody can identify this piece. I'll tell you what, interesting to me, that looks like it would go. Well, that's today's mystery. But I believe that's a Nolan RP Rail Puller 1. Okay, I'm going to take the leaf rake, clean this up. This is going to be the first tie pulled on the ETR, not the best way that we could do it, but I think we're gonna get her done. Really, what we've gotten done in the first hour here is pretty interesting. I think it's on now. Yeah, it's on now. Uh-huh. Okay, what we're going to do now, I'm going to shovel off the top of the tie. Graham's going to run the pick down beside it a little bit, loosen it up, then we'll be ready to pull. Frozen. Remember last winter, I should say two winters ago, when we tried to pull a tie right in through here somewhere, it was just frozen down. Impossible. The tie tongs actually work better than I thought. This tool I'm about to use is a spike puller. Now many of you have used these, some have not. It's simply a fulcrum where you're going to grab the spike and then I'm going to roll back on this and that'll pluck that spike out of there.
tell you? Wow. That tells you that tie is rotten. Okay, go on to the next one. Let's do at least two. Oh yeah, I still be going to So what we decided to do here, we're just going to stay on top of it. Yeah, see that lifted the weight off of it, yeah. but now you're not directly into the tie. Well, see so you, that. yeah, comes to where your push is the straightest. Well, and the other advantage of this excavator is you've got the. Yes. You can get to the tie. Yeah, anyway. yeah, you're right. You're right. The problem though is. When you get oh, we're too close to it. Yeah, it's pushing it. Now we didn't clean out the end either. You got any more? Okay, let me get the tongs back on. We'll see if we can just pull it straight out. Clean that little bit of ballast away from the end, just like, uh, don't get into the mud. Yeah, that was almost perfect. Okay, lift up and we'll get the tie tongs on it. Okay, we don't know if this is gonna work or not. So there it was, the first tie removed. So we're going to clean that out and go get one and put it in its place. You know what? Let's let's get the tie first because we're going to um, knock some stuff down in there, pulling it. If we go right there, you could roll the bucket for leverage. Trying to make a uh, well, think, tie handle. Well, if there was just a little pin that went through here, or put take this bolt off and put an eye, another eye like this on here, you uh -huh. could put it through there and slide a trailer hitch pin through it, or a piece of chain through it. Well, hook, hook it on the outside right here. Well, I can't because there's. I know, a, but do it from the outside. I, I can't. It, it won't do it because there's webbing. It's webbed. It's not. Oh, where I'm standing, I couldn't see yeah, the web. Yeah, it's webbed. It would go on top, but it'd be facing the well, maybe here at its no, smallest it point there. right there. It won't go, no, yeah, it's too fat right there. Speaking of too fat, I saw you eat that fritter. <laughs> Woo! Pills boy, dough boy, just hang it on the side, it won't. okay, on the side of the bucket. Well, yeah, so let's go down there and get that, get a tie. See if you can hear, hear Phil 
up on the Genesee in Wyoming. Blowing the whistle on those old GEs. You think that's through freight? I think that's through. Huh. Because, no, I've been getting them. Okay, Gandy Dancer. Get that there cleaned out. I'll help. 